after unpacking the OnePlus Nord about a week ago and having spent some time with it, it is time to share with you our experiences using this phone which OnePlus is hoping to make a huge success in the mid-range market. Only time will tell if they will succeed in doing so. Nerd really does seem nice at first glance, although not because of the particular distinct design. When viewed from the back, it looks a bit generic, but with a good choice of color and certain vibe it has, it definitely leaves an impression. The phone, which is not small by all means, fits nicely in the palm of your hand with the thin bezels around a 6.44 inch screen, which makes the phone seem smaller than it actually is. Speaking of the screen, Nord comes with the fluid AMOLED display that has a refresh rate of 90Hz, making it the best display in the 400 euro price point. Realistically speaking, the biggest competitors in this price range are the Samsung Galaxy A71 and the Mi Note 10 Lite, and neither of these phones have a 90Hz refresh rate screen. And honestly, once you're used to faster refresh, it truly makes that big of a difference. The screen brightness is very good, of course not like on the 8 Pro model we've got test recently, but that's expected given the huge price gap between the two. As expected, the phone comes with the Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection which is the standard in this class. What I especially like about the Nord is the illusion of the physical slider switch that allows you to put your device in silent mode, something I think every device should definitely have. The processor inside the Nord is the Snapdragon 765, while the similarly priced competition uses the Snapdragon 730 chipset. A newer processor, better production process, newer cores, higher clock speeds, better GPU, as well as 5G support. Will you see some big difference? That depends on the way you use the phone. Thing is, this chipset is not made to endanger any higher priced models with Snapdragon 865 and 855 chipsets. They still outperform it, but 765 does outperform the Snapdragon 730 that most of the competition in this price range uses. That makes this phone great for gaming, offering quite a lot for a modest price tag. Snapdragon 765 comes with 5G support that competitors do not have, which currently does seem like a gimmick since 5G network is far from being widespread at this point, but this does make Nord future-proof purchase. The Snapdragon 765 combined with 12GB of RAM works really well, and I presume that the 8GB model also wouldn't have a significant performance drop. But sadly, the different RAM solutions also come with a different internal storage solution, which might be a deciding factor given that the phone doesn't support memory cards. We saw a similar trend with both Mi Notes 10 Lite and A71, but Nord did offer a better variety of memory options available. Looking through the different comments online, it seems that this phone is most often compared to the Mi Note 10 Lite model. Nord is clearly faster, more fluid and has more refined user interface. So let's see where the competition outshined the OnePlus Nord. For starters, the battery. The Mi Note 10 Lite has over 1000 mAh larger battery capacity, which makes the phone about 20 grams heavier, but also provides a couple of extra hours of battery life. After running Nord through our 10 hour YouTube video test, it ended up with 39% battery life, while its main competitor, the Mi Notes 10 Lite, ended about 60% of battery, which is quite substantial and translates to roughly 2 extra hours of intensive use. The second thing that the Nord lags behind the competition is the lack of the 3.5mm connector. I would usually brush off the fact that the phone is missing this port given the rather large expanse of Bluetooth headphones and earbuds in the market, but since the competition does have it, it cannot go unnoticed. In terms of overall sound quality, I think that the average user will be satisfied with what Nord has to offer. And finally, the camera. I have to admit, after Nord's announcement, I definitely expected OnePlus to do a bit better job in terms of its camera quality. As far as the camera system is concerned, the OnePlus Nord brings a combination that we've seen very often across the middle class with four cameras on the back and maybe not so common dual camera on the front. The main sensor is a 48 megapixel with f1.8 aperture, phase autofocus and optical stabilization. We have seen this solution many times so far and we've known what it's capable of, but we also know that the results can be very depending on how it's implemented by the manufacturer. And we can say that OnePlus is among those who have used this sensor in the best possible way. 
because we noticed that in daytime photos, Nord's processing is not very good and an attempt to improve the level of detail with the sharpness filter, it negatively affected the overall quality of the photos. And just so we're clear, the photos are indeed decent and usable, just not on the level that we're used to seeing from identical hardware. It is also noticeable that the dynamic range is not too wide, so details are often lost in darker parts of the scene. The phone software also offers 2 times zoom, which due to the absence of the telephoto sensor is obtained by cropping the image from the main sensor with the expected results in the forms of lower level of detail. Interestingly, in seams with simpler objects and less fine details, the main sensor actually makes pretty good photos, so it's obvious that OnePlus needs to improve their processing in some of the future software updates. In addition to the main sensor, there is an ultra-wide 8 megapixel sensor with an angle of 119 degrees, which has a low level of detail due to the lower megapixel count, but otherwise provides a look very reminiscent of the main sensor in terms of color and dynamic range. The third sensor is a 2 megapixel macro, which is also not the best we have seen, primarily due to the high noise level and not overly close focus. It is also interesting that the OnePlus decided to disable the use of LED flash when using this sensor, since when shooting macro, extra light always comes in handy. The last sensor on the back is usually a 5 megapixel depth sensor. When it comes to night photography, the impressions are probably better than during the day, at least compared to other models with similar features. The night mode is pretty good and the photos from the main sensor look quite satisfying, bright and colorful and with enough light. All in all, it seems that if OnePlus wanted to play safe with a camera system that was also seen on cheaper phones than the Nord, but the execution wasn't that great. And this is honestly the biggest letdown, but the camera system in this price range is something that even bigger manufacturers have struggled and failed over the years. Probably the strongest point of the OnePlus Nord camera is video recording, which is very pleasant surprise. Very decent stabilization, as well as practical absence of rolling shutter problems, makes the video look quite smooth, and interestingly with a solid level of detail, so this phone is capable of making some really good videos for its class. A small complaint is the noise that can be seen in daily recordings, the cause of which is unknown to us, but it does not significantly impact the overall very positive impression. Night videos are also quite usable, as long as certain amount of light is available, such as street light, while otherwise the quality drops significantly very quick. Now in addition to video recording, it is worth praising the front camera, which consists of two sensors, one with 32 megapixel and one ultra wide with 8 megapixels, for situations when you want to take selfies with a group of friends. The main selfie sensor provides excellent sharpness and level of detail and makes really great photos, and the ultra wide is also not bad at all, despite a little less detail and contrast. The price for beautiful selfie photos is the not so beautiful oversized cutout in the screen. Since I didn't like this option at all with the Huawei P40 model, I can't ignore it this time either. It is definitely either that, or I just don't take enough selfies myself in order to appreciate this compromise. So, after all that's been said, how good is the Nord? Nord is definitely one of the best phones in the 400 euro class, but the same could be said for the other two models I mentioned during this review. So we realistically have three phones in this class of which none can be labeled as the worst, but at the same time we cannot tell exactly which one is the best either. And let's face it, Nord could have been the one but it stopped shortly of completing all of the good features it has, mainly because of the camera system that we really expected to be better. Nord is definitely an excellent attempt for OnePlus to test itself in price range it didn't venture before. We also think that OnePlus missed a chance to have their first mid-range phone enjoy all of the spotlight it could have gotten and leave its mark on the market as the phone that would impose itself as the best purchase in a very difficult and complex class. But even with the aforementioned objections, there is no doubt that Nord has definitely raised some dust. And it will be very interesting to see how much this model will manage to improve the OnePlus market position in this period ahead. For this reason, Nord can be a key factor in the company's further progress. We'll see if it takes it into a new, even more successful era. Thank you once again for watching Bench House. My name is Marco and feel free to leave a like and comment below if you enjoyed this review and also subscribe for more content. And I will see you next time.